Join me for a realistic day of breastfeeding a seven-week-old baby on demand. Good morning. <laughs> it is 8.21 on Sunday morning, October the 27th. So August is seven weeks and two days old now. If we're looking at our full 24 hours, um, I was asleep at midnight. And my husband had him and brought him into me at about 1230 and he nursed. And I would say that probably took about 20 minutes and then we both went to sleep. And typically most days he, or most nights rather, he will wake up every one to two hours then the rest of the night to nurse. Um, but last night he nursed at 1230 and then didn't wake up until 539. And that literally never happens. So if you are in the throes of nursing your newborn and your baby is waking up, all the time in the middle of the night to nurse know that that is normal and what he did last night not normal however when he woke up at 5 39 he then cluster fed for the next hour so um he nursed on one side then the other and then back to the first side and then the other again and that took about an hour at 6 30 he popped off and went back to sleep um and i tried to go back to sleep but was not successful so i got up and then he got up for the day at about 7 45 we started nursing again at about eight and now we're still nursing. If you're new to the channel, my name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and I'm a 36 year old infertility mom. August is my second baby. I have a daughter who's four years old. I breastfed her on demand as well. And she was pretty consistent throughout the day. She would eat every one to one and a half hours. And so I knew if I had nursed her and she went to sleep, I had an hour and a half. I could get out of the house if I needed to, or do something um, before she would wake up and need to nurse again. He is nowhere near that consistent and cluster feeds a lot of the day still. Um, so again, if you have a baby that is wanting to nurse all the time during the day, just know that that's normal. Part of what inspired me to make this video is I saw another mom do a, you know, breastfeed with my eight week old with me for a day and her baby was sleeping through the night, only breastfeeding once every three hours. Those are not realistic expectations. And if that is the only mom that you see an example of, you're just going to have postpartum depression because your baby is not going to do that. And it's so wonderful for her that her baby is consistent and eats on a schedule, but not realistic for most breastfeeding moms. When August was first latched on this morning, I also took that opportunity to put the haka on the other side. And I got about, where's it at? Just shy of two ounces of milk. And I would say that's a little bit more than normal for me, probably because he didn't eat as much last night. And I was pretty engorged when he woke up to nurse for the first time this morning, but that's most of the milk I'm able to pump. Um, he doesn't usually take a long enough break during the day for me to use my electric pump. So just one to two times a day, I'm using the Haka to get let down milk on the other side. And while we're on the subject of pumping, I just want to show what a realistic freezer stash looks like. This is my entire freezer stash right here. And most of these bags only have like two to three ounces of milk. So like, yeah, that one has four ounces, but like three ounces, lots of three ounce, three and a half, two ounces bags, because that's typically what I'm able to get in a day. A lot of the times on social media, you'll see these giant bags of milk in these completely full free freezers that are, you know, top to bottom, just completely full of breast milk. And if you're an overproducer, that is great for you. I'm so, so great that your stash looks like that. But for most of us, that's not realistic. And I think gives a lot of women really unrealistic expectations of how much milk they're going to be able to pump and freeze and save for like when they go back to work in their freezer stash. And this handsome boy's getting an outfit change because he just spit up all over his dad. Whole belly full of milk. We made it to 9.09 .09 and we are breastfeeding again. Probably because he spit up a huge belly full of milk all over my husband. Um, and I think that's one of the hazards of your baby finally sleeping a significant chunk of time is that you wake up super engorged and then they're gulping down milk and then their belly gets really full. It's 11.07 and we are breastfeeding again. He basically cluster fed from 9.09 .09 to 10.21. So I only had about 45 minutes to not breastfeed, um, but I did get some laundry started, got some dis dishes washed. Um, sisters watching Daniel Tiger right now. Um, he, you know, while he was cluster feeding, we basically played Barbies with sister. Um, and that is my best tip. If you have other kiddos is find stuff you can do with them while sitting on the couch, whether it's playing Barbies, reading books, doing a puzzle, it helps. So it's 1250 and we're nursing again. He did give me time to eat lunch and get some laundry folded. 
And I also think it's worth noting he does not have to contact nap for all of his naps. Um, definitely he will sleep longer if I just sit and hold him the whole time. Um, now that I have another kiddo, I don't really feel like that's an option. That's basically what I did with my daughter. Like you could not put her down for anything. So it's good that she was my first. Um, but I, I do have to get stuff done. And so fortunately he will sleep for a little bit if I put him down um, and give me a chance to do dishes without holding him or you know cleaning, tidying up, whatever. But the only way I got anything done with my daughter is if I wore her in a wrap carrier while I tried to do those things. All right, it's 428 and we're nursing again. While we were out on our walk, he nursed for about eight minutes on the trail and fell asleep. And that's usually what happens when we take walks in the carrier. And that's also usually how I get him to take the longest nap and get the most time with him asleep during the day is just doing stuff with him in the carrier. Um, when we got back, uh, we had splashed in mud puddles. So sister got a bath. So I did not film nursing then, but he nursed again. At, I want to say it was like 320 something. Um, and so, it, you know, about an hour later, we're nursing again. All right. So it's 604 and we are nursing again. And he nursed for almost an hour last time. So not much of a break. I did get to eat dinner and I did get to fold some more laundry. And I feel like this is the part of the evening where I just start eating continuously because also he usually just starts nursing continuously. So um, I ate dinner. I'm going to have dessert now. I've got pumpkin pie with an excessive amount of whipped cream. Um, I usually also go through a bag of popcorn every night. And then a lot of times I'll also have a bedtime snack. Um, you're just so hungry all the time breastfeeding, but that's normal. He will usually fall asleep for a while while I'm nursing him, watching TV in the evening. Um, but he pretty much stays continuously latched. And I find that if I pop my nipple out of his mouth, it will wake him up and he will want to go right back on. So I just let him. All right, so he nursed from 6.04 to 7, and then from 7.17 to 7.44, we just stopped for a diaper change, um, and now it's 7.58, and he's nursing again. And, you know, it's kind of coming up on witching hour, so he gets fussy because a lot of times he gets gassy, which is normal, but also, um, if you watch my previous videos, we make less prolactin in the evenings. Milk supply is lower in the evenings, and that's normal. And, again, a lot of moms will say things like, I don't feel like he's getting enough or I feel like he's using me as a pacifier and then they'll be tempted to give formula at those times and you certainly can choose to do that if you don't want to continuously breastfeed your baby but letting him be at the breast as much as he wants is just helping my milk supply and so you can create this vicious cycle where you supplement with formula and then your baby's not stimulating your breasts as much and then your milk supply drops and then you supplement with with more formula um you know, and it's a vicious cycle. One thing I wanted to say in the last clip that I forgot to mention is that during all of the time I would have normally been at work, like if this was a working day for me, so 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. because my lunch is not paid, um, I would have been nursing for three hours and one minute total during that time. But really it was broken up into about 10 different nursing sessions. However, when I go back to work, I'm going to get two 20 minute pumping breaks and my lunch break. And that's it. And a lot of women are expected to be back at work at this point in America. A lot of states, you are only protected um, until six weeks postpartum, and that is unpaid leave. And it's just absolutely wild that if we want women to breastfeed and we want to support new moms, that we would expect them to be working during that time when they basically need to be continuously available for their baby as a food source. But yeah, the witching hour fussiness behavior is totally normal. Some babies can be calmed by continuously being at the breast. Usually he can, which is such a blessing. His sister was super colicky and her witching hour basically lasted like five hours minimum every night. And she would get to a point where she would just scream at my boob and that wouldn't make her happy anymore. And absolutely nothing would make her happy other than wearing her in the carrier, bouncing aggressively on an exercise ball and blaring Cotton Eye Joe as loud as we possibly could. I'm grateful we don't have to do that with him. Usually if nursing won't calm him down and he gets to a point where he's just screaming at the boob, we can give him a bath and then he's pretty chill. Look at you mean mugging at the camera. All right, so it is 940. We have been breastfeeding a total of 413 minutes so far today, which totals up to about seven hours of breastfeeding broken up over 16 sessions throughout the day. And this really 
just spaced out. He just spaced out that much in the last week or two. The first four weeks postpartum, he was pretty much continuously nursing during the day, which is normal for some babies. Some babies will eat every two to three hours like you hear, but I would say that is not most breastfed babies. And that was a real kick in the pants for me with my first baby. And so I just wanted to make this video to show moms um, if you feel like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my baby? My baby wants to eat all the time. Like that's what breastfed babies do. They like to be at the breast and it's good for them and it's good for you. It, it helps keep your milk supply up. Um, I'm sure I had another point, but I am completely exhausted since I've basically been up since 5.30 this morning. And on my earlier note about, you know, maternity leave and working and stuff, um, I'm in Washington state and we actually have 16 weeks of state paid maternity leave here, which is absolutely amazing. And on top of that, because I had complications from my birth, I actually get 18 weeks of paid maternity leave. Um, and that's new in the last few years. When I had my daughter, the law had just been passed for state paid maternity leave. And so I only got 12 weeks with her. And I am absolutely ecstatic that I get 18 weeks of paid maternity leave. And actually dads um, or partners also get 12 weeks of bonding leave in Washington, which is absolutely wonderful. I think it's worth it for the health of moms and babies, decreasing postpartum depression rates, increasing breastfeeding rates, and just improving overall quality of life. Anyways, I digress. Just know if your baby wants to eat all the time, you're not doing anything wrong. Your baby's not using you as a pacifier. It's normal. He probably actually will eat once more before he goes to sleep. I don't know. He kind of looks like he's going to sleep right now. He always fakes me out around 10 o'clock though and pops his eyes open and he's wide awake. Um, so as soon as he's done this time, I'm going to pass him off to my husband. I'm going to go to bed. Matt has a bottle. He can feed him if, if he's hungry and I won't take him back until probably after midnight, maybe even 1.30 in the morning. Make sure to like this video if you have a baby that wants to breastfeed all of the time. Next time, I'm going to talk about how to increase your milk supply. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss that upload. Thank you so much for watching.